Peter Navarro, who just was released from prison after serving a four-month sentence for defying a subpoena from the January 6th Select Committee in Congress. Let's listen in briefly. In Miami, Joe Biden and his Department of Injustice put me there. Tonight, I'm here with you in this beautiful city of Milwaukee. I, I got a very simple message for you. If they can come for me, and if they can come for Donald Trump, be careful, they will come for you. If we don't control our government, their government will control us. If we don't control all three branches of our government, legislative, executive, and judicial, their government will put some of us, like me and Steve Bannon, in prison and control the rest of us. Here's how it went. Here's how I got in prison. The legislative branch came for me first. Your favorite Democrat, Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> created your favorite committee, the sham January 6th committee, which demanded that I violate executive privilege. What did I do? I refused. The J6 committee demanded that I betray Donald John Trump to save my own skin. I refused. Here's the thing about the Constitution. They demanded that I break the law because they have no respect for it. I refused, and a Democrat majority in the House then voted to hold me in contempt. All right, what happened next? The next jackboot to drop was the executive branch. Another one of your favorite Democrats, Democrat Attorney General Merrick Garland. There's a winner. Him and Jack Smith indicted and prosecuted me for criminal contempt of Congress. Now, here's what's weird about it. It's something that Democrat prosecutors refuse to do against one of their own, including two guys with blood on their hands, Eric Holder and Alejandro Mayorkas, the great border czar, right? They've actually gotten people killed for decades, for decades. The Department of Injustice right now. The Department of Justice policy stated, hear me out on this, if Congress slaps a subpoena on a senior White House advisor like me, the advisor's duty is to politely tell them to go pound sand. That's exactly what I did. So, so far we got two branches, legislative and executive. The judicial branch delivered the final blow. Just as, uh, here's another favorite of yours, just as Democrat Judge Juan Marchand, you know this guy? Did to Donald John Trump in his Manhattan kangaroo court, another Democrat judge, a guy named Ahmed Mehta, keep your eye on this guy, Ahmed Mehta, Obama appointee, they stripped me of every possible defense, and then what? Just like in Manhattan with Donald Trump, they threw me to the wolves of an anti-Trump jury in where the D.C. swamp, they convicted me, they jailed me. Guess what? They did not break me. And they will never break Donald Trump. They will never break Donald Trump. All right, now here's the most important thing I'm going to tell you. You may be thinking this couldn't happen to you. 
Mm -mm, make no mistake, they're already coming for you. Joe and Kamala, they threw out the woke blue carpet across the Rio Grande, opened our borders to what? Murderers and rapists. When Donald Trump said it, thank you for saying that, when Donald Trump said murderers, rapists in 2016, they go, oh, racist, whatever. No, we read the papers. It's murderers and rapists. Murderers and rapists, drug cartels, human traffickers, terrorists, Chinese spies. Bring my girl out now. That's what these lawfare jackals don't understand. When they put people like me in prison and fire figurative and now literal bullets at Donald Trump, they also assault our families. On election day, America will hold these lawfare jackals accountable. Now, here's the sweetest thing that's going to come off my lips. Vote Trump Vance. 24 for Trump 47. I'm Peter Navarro. I went to prison, so you won't have to. This is my beautiful girl. She did the time with me. That's what these friggin' Democrats don't understand. They do this to our families. She's my girl. Yeah. I love you. Let's win. Do not let up. Do not let up. Pedal to the metal till November. All right, there you have Peter Navarro. Uh, just a few hours after being released from a prison down in Florida, he's here in Milwaukee. You heard what he had to say. Uh, he was convicted of defying a congressional subpoena from the January 6th Select Committee, uh, and that has been his response. I want to go to Caitlin Collins. She's on the floor watching all of this unfold for us. Uh, for us. Give us a sense of the reaction where you were. It seemed to be rather rousing. Yeah, well, I think that was one of the biggest rounds of applause that I have seen from most of the speakers who have been here. I've been on the floor for all three days of the convention so far. Peter Navarro got a standing ovation when he came out on stage. And for those who don't know, he flew straight from Miami to Milwaukee this morning, hours after he was released from prison, where he had been serving that four-month sentence for defying Congress after he refused to, to comply with the subpoena that he got from the January 6th committee, as you heard him reference. And, and this crowd was on their feet for a lot of Peter Navarro's speech. They were chanting uh, with him as he was talking about this and accusing President Biden, of course, baselessly of using the Justice Department against him. A reminder, Peter Navarro obviously went to prison because he did not comply with that subpoena. He said that President Trump had invoked executive privilege over that. There was no evidence that the court found that he did. But Wolf, just to give you a sense of what it's like to hear down here on the floor, Peter Navarro is just hours out of prison, but there's also Paul Manafort here. Back in 2016, he had a very different role. He was the chair of Donald Trump's campaign. Of course, he was later had his sentence pardoned by Donald Trump. So he is not the only convicted felon that was on stage. Paul Manafort also down here on the delegation floor as well, Wolf, though he did tell me he has no formal role in this convention. He said he's just here enjoying it. Caitlin, stand by. We're, of course, going to be getting back to you. Right now, I want to bring in our CNN fact checker, our senior reporter, Daniel Dale. Daniel, we just heard a lot from Peter Navarro. What stood out to you in Peter Navarro's speech? What stood out, Wolf, was that there was a whole lot of nonsense. So he claimed that Attorney General Garland and Jack Smith indicted and prosecuted him. Uh, prosecuted him. Jack Smith was not involved. This was a prosecution done by regular old DOJ. Jack Smith is, is uh, a special counsel specifically for Trump-related cases. He claimed he was convicted by an anti-Trump jury. Uh, he's assuming based on the voting patterns of, yes, very, pro very Democratic Washington, D.C., but he doesn't know that. We reported the jury was comprised of a diverse set of people in D.C including government consultants, a NASA contractor, someone in mental health services, and a few retirees. And then I think most significantly, and Caitlin mentioned this, uh, he claimed that uh, Democrats wanted him to violate executive privilege. Well, he produced no direct evidence to the court that former President Trump even tried to invoke privilege in his case. He claimed it over and over, never proved it whatsoever.